Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And it's a gorgeous day outside, so I'm trying to sneak in a quick vid before it starts to rain because supposedly it's supposed to start raining like in a couple more hours. And yesterday's video, as you guys saw, it was just pouring outside. So anyways, I wanted to touch base on how do you cope trying to build your trust again with a person you know your husband or your wife after they had an affair it's tough as is to it's it's a tough situation as is you know um anger comes in um sometimes hate comes in and you tend to speak and act on your first reactions without, you know, thinking. So, there are people, and I definitely don't knock them, you know, for that. There are couples who, you know, whether they cheated on each other, whether they both did or, you know, one did unto the other, that, you know, they still deeply do love each other and they still want to remain together and work it out. If that's what you want to do, then by all means, I mean, who am I to judge each couple? Everybody has their own story behind closed doors. So we have to face the reality that, you know, there are people that, yes, you know, they, they cheat on each other, but they still want to make it work. So how do you make it work after all that, you know, has happened? I think that it's important to kind of like step back and take some time off from each other because if you really want to work it out just remaining under that same roof together you're not gonna have time to really think and reflect on what is it that you really want to do with yourself what moves you want to make or what is it that you want to do with that person you know especially if you have kids together when you're under that same roof and you're sleeping in the same bed, it's almost like you feel disgust, like still sleeping in the same bed with that person. So I think it's best to, you know, separate, break up, and one party, they're, you know, thinking, what is it that I really want to do? It's almost like you're meditating. You're meditating, you're focusing on yourself, you're focusing on rebuilding yourself again because, let's admit it, you know, sometimes people just get really, really broken down from an affair. You know, especially women. Women, you know, we're like the most emotional and our self-security just goes out the door. It's just like a whole bunch of things that go through our head, you know. we, we Besides feeling hurt, and deceived we start to feel you know am I not attractive enough or did I not satisfy that person in the bedroom enough a whole bunch of things go through our head so it's like I said you know it's best to separate and not separate as in okay you cheated on me, now we're going to break up, we're going to separate, and I am going to do me. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to sleep with random men, have a good time, party, and, you know, the guy too. Oh, you cheated on me, I'm going to go and sleep with all these females. I'm going to live my life, you know, live that single life. No. If you want to make it work with that person... If you do not want to leave, and a lot of people don't want to leave, especially when they have kids, um, it doesn't mean to separate and to start walling out. No, it means to separate and meditate. What is it that you want to do? Do you want to get back with that person? Are you willing to forgive that person? Forgiveness is very tough for many people. It really, really is. Um what else that and at the same time it's like how do you rebuild your trust again so say if you know you guys taking time off and whether it's two three you know six months or maybe even like a year you know 
you guys took your time off and now you guys came to terms that you know what I am willing to forgive you or I have forgiven you and now I want to come together and make this work once you guys come back together under that same roof you if you told yourself hey you know I've forgiven you let's make it work you cannot come back together in that relationship and still hold on to that hurt and that grudge that you had when you first found out so the whole time that you guys were separated and you knew in your heart that hmm, maybe I do want to go back with this person and I'm gonna try and just work on myself I'm gonna try and just build myself again that should have been done the forgiveness that should have been done throughout that time you cannot take time apart and then come back together and still hold that resentment that hate that disgust in your heart why because every time that you guys get into an argument you're always gonna throw it in their face oh well you're the one that did this and you're the one that did that and I was always the one good to you you can't do that because basically first of all you have to really ask yourself have I really forgiven that person if I'm still rubbing things in their face if I'm still throwing their past in their face you have to really ask yourself that and at the same time you're not helping the relationship blossom if you want to regain that person's trust and work it out by you keep throwing the past just shoving it in their face that relationship is not going to blossom and grow and peak at to where you guys want it to be so with that being said you have to start all over again you know you guys come back together and now you have to tell yourself okay I have forgiven you my heart is willing to be open to you again maybe it's not you know open a hundred percent maybe like 80 90 percent but my heart is willing to start my heart is coming in this relationship in this marriage again with an open heart because i have forgiven you and now we have to make it work to try and rebuild each other's trust again that is also tough so how do you do that and again, guys, um, I'm no expert in <laughs> giving advice. Um, you know, sometimes I go by my personal experiences um, or just common sense. So just wanted to point that out. So once you get back together, you know, on the same roof, how do you rebuild each other's trust again? That means... If you are going out and you need to tell your husband, you need to tell your wife, hey, you know, this is where I'm going out. These are the people who I'm rolling with, you know, you you know my best friend or, you know, my girls, um, feel free to call me anytime. It doesn't mean that you're being controlling, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that you're being controlling at all. It just means that you, if you really love that person and you want to make it work and you already left the past in the past you have forgiven them you have to do what it takes to make that person trust you again so if you are going out and you have to tell that person hey this is where I'm going and hey you know expect me home at this certain time and feel free to call me like hey you know what's up how how how's things are, are you enjoying yourself if that's what it takes let me, <clears throat> excuse me by all means do it and that goes for both men and women. And I know a lot of guys, when these things happen, they feel like, you know, they're being controlled by the woman. Or, you know, you just have a lot of couples that don't want to be kind of like stalked in a way. Like they don't want them, every single move to be known. But it's like I said, if you want to rebuild that trust, you have to do it. Now that it's a freaking option. It's not an option. You have to do it. Um, another thing is the lies. You know, if if you feel like you have to lie about something stupid, something silly, 
you have to catch yourself and not lie about it. Because already you have to remember this person, when you cheated on them, obviously you were living a lie. You were lying to that person. You were lying about your whereabouts. You know, you were lying about, you know, whether you were with your girls, with your boys or not. Um, so every little thing that you say is going to be questionable to that person. Like you could say something like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go hit the mall for a couple of hours. I need some new clothes. That, that alone is going to be questionable to that person. They're going to be thinking like, hmm, I wonder if they're really going to the mall for a couple of hours. You have to, <clears throat> you have to try and not fib which, you know, it's like a little small white lie. You have to try your best not to fib lie about dumb stuff. Because already that person doesn't trust you. They're trying to build the trust towards you. So how can they build it if you keep lying about small little things? So that means you have to be honest about every little thing. Even small mistakes that you have done, you have to be honest about it. Even if it's something like, hey, you know, um, did you happen to deposit the money, the, the money into the bank today? And say if that person wanted you to deposit that money into the bank that day and it had to be in that day, but you were in a rush and you couldn't do it, so you left it for another day. You cannot lie about that. You have to tell them, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't go to the bank. I was in a rush. I'll do it tomorrow or, you know, so on. Because if they feel like you're lying to them about the small, silly things already, they're going to be thinking like, you know what? This person hasn't changed. They're, they're lying about these small things. And if you're lying about small things, best believe you're going to lie about larger, more serious, important things in life. So if you want to rebuild that trust, let that person know where you're at. Let them know where you're at. Let them know what time you're going to be home. Who you with. Don't lie about small things. Um, what else? <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm having a little brain fart here. But yeah, you guys. You know, it is tough as it is to get into a relationship. You know, especially in marriage. And this already has been done. But... The key things into trying to make it work and you're getting back together with your husband, with your wife is, let one, let the past go. Whatever is done, is done. As much as it bothers you to think about, you know, your wife being in bed with another man or your man being in bed with that other woman, as much as it hurts to think about it, as much as it hurts your heart to just vision that and trust me. It hurts everybody. Nobody wants to see the man or or the woman, you know, envision that with somebody else. You cannot keep bringing that past that's already been done into the present. I don't care if he cheated on you five months ago. If five months ago you guys broke up and now you decided to, you know what... I really love you. I really care about you. I want to get back together. I, I have faith in God that, you know, our marriage can go past through this, can can leave this behind. You have to leave that in the past and not keep rub, rubbing it in their faces every time you guys argue. Why? The more you do that, the more that person is going to look at you like, you know what? This person, they're just keep rubbing it in my face. Do they really trust me? Have they really forgiven me? And sometimes, in many cases, that person tends to take 10 steps backwards and they end up cheating again. Why? Because they figure, hey, you know, you don't trust me. You haven't forgiven me. Um, why, why are you here? And temptation kicks in and that person is right back to square one. And therefore, it creates that cycle again the, the the whole process the whole cycle is starting to begin again so that's one the second one that i mentioned be honest about every little thing every little thing be honest about it i don't care where you where 
you're at. I don't care what you're doing. Be honest about every little thing. Why? Because every little thing is going to be questionable to that person. Wherever you go, it's going to be questionable. You could say, hey, I'm going down to the corner store, you know, to get a few things. That person who's to say, they're probably thinking that you're going to meet up, you know, um, another girl or another man down the corner real quick. Be honest about everything. And, you know, as tough as it is, it's not easy coming into a relationship after that person has, you know, deceived you. But if you guys want to make it work, you definitely have to leave all that stuff in the past and come into that relationship with an open heart. Love that person again. After you've forgiven them, basically love that person like you've never been hurt before. And you know, when you guys never been hurt before, you are head over heels over that person. Because once you've been hurt, you tend to, you know, hold back. And you have this wall, you know, built in between you and that other person. Or just any, you know, just in general. So, I'm going to try and keep this short, you guys. Because you know how I tend to ramble on. So, excuse me for that. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. You know, um, what's what's helpful to you guys to try and cope with a relationship or a marriage, you know, after an affair has happened. Or if you guys, you know, are married now or if that's happened to you and you're actually still with that person who has cheated on you or you were the one that cheated on them, let me know what you guys, you know, did to make it work and how's things going now so again you guys thank you for tuning in much appreciated <laughs> and i will see you guys next time bye